other notes I want to give to you guys. So, 3 minus x. Um, so in this example, the same thing, guys. We have a radical and we have a denominator. So when we have a radical and denominator, we have to set them both up. 3 minus x has to be greater than or equal to 0. x squared plus 4x equals 0. Radicand, greater than or equal to 0. Denominator, equal to 0. We basically just solve. This brings up to your point. It's not so much that multiplying or dividing. It's when you multiply, divide by a negative number. That's what flips the sign. So you could, you could easily just add the x to the other side. Or you could use inverse operations, as you were mentioning, to get to that point. And again, if you're going to use inverse operations, just make sure when you multiply or divide by a negative number, you understand that you have to flip the sign. So you guys can see that these are exactly the same. All right. So that means x has to be less than positive 3. And then here, we're going to have to use some factoring. right? Now, we can't factor a trinomial like we did over here. So we have to look for, well, what could we do? Do we have any common terms? And it looks like these both share a x. And now I, wouldn't, now I can use a zero product property. And remember, guys, when you have a product equal to 0, you can set them both equal to 0. And then solve. So my denominator is equal to 0 when x equals 0 and when x equals negative 4. So I'm going to put those holes here on my graph. I have a 0 and 1, 2, 3, 4. And then. This says my domain is defined for all values less than 3. So here's 3. So it's all values less than 3, but then we have these two undefined values. So we can't include those. So 3 is good, but nothing there, nothing there, and nothing there. So your domain would look like negative infinity to negative 4. That's that set. From negative 4 to 0, that's that set. And then from 0 to 3, that's the last set. Don't worry. Oh, 